have been several situations around the league where guys have gotten, I guess, uh, in trouble with the gambling policy and the rules with that. What kind of education do you or the league provide to make sure you, know, you guys are aware of everything they are allowed to or not allowed to? Yeah, um, the NFL does a great job of educating our players and our staff. Um, and for us, we held that meeting in, uh, in spring, in the spring where they came out and educated on us on what is, um, what is in bounds and what is out of bounds. And, um, and so I, that should provide you know, great clarity to, to us as we move forward. And um, you know, it's, it's a little bit new, right, for all of us, uh, this gambling being around the, the NFL and how this whole world is evolving around us as, as we speak so um, it's important to know um, kind of where where the uh, where the guardrails are. Sean, how do you prepare and watch film if, <laughs> if at all differently when you're a head coach as opposed to the defensive coordinator? Yeah I mean it's really just through a different lens uh, sometimes it means and it will mean and it has in the past as well to some extent but more so now even going back through the film more than once so there's a lot of film that we we capture out here, and so that takes that takes some time. So I'll go through it with the defensive staff when uh, when we're done practice. Usually, I was able to hang out a little bit after practice, catch up with with Brandon and Terry and and our trainer Nate Bresky, and and um, and so sometimes that'll still be the case, but more times than not, if all goes well at practice, I need to get out of here and get back to stay on on schedule with those guys with the defensive staff because. Then there's a follow-up meeting with the players to review the film, and then I'll have to come back and watch it from an offensive and special teams perspective as well. So um, it's just it's just a little bit of extra work. But more time in the lab. It sounds more like. time in the lab. Yeah. <laughs> you told us a few times when talking about that how excited you are to kind of do this again. Do you feel that more with training camp? Has that worn off since you know the early days, or like where are you feeling about that right now? Yeah. Um, you know, I think first and foremost, the staff has done a really good job of of complimenting me in the way of um, offsetting when I'm when I'm not in that role of a head coach and I'm working I'm, I'm pulled some other direction um, you know whether it's Matt Wars with my assistant Matt Smiley who steps up during the situations that we run at practice you guys saw that in the spring um, really the staff overall has done a great job of, of making my job a little bit easier that way um, and then I look forward to it I told the defense last night that um, I'm excited about doing this. Um, I think one of the byproducts that I saw in the spring was just getting around the team a little bit more. Um, sometimes as a head coach, you, uh, as Kyle, I think it was Kyle Williams used to tell me, um, being a, you know you're kind of up in the mahogany behind the mahogany desk, right? As the as the that was his his vision of it. I think it was Kyle. Um, uh, uh, so. You know, I, I and I think there is a there is a piece of that that's accurate that you're not always around the people that you really need to and want to be around because the job pulls you. So that'll be the pull for me. Really, is making sure I'm trying to you know I'm in both places at once. Um, but I, I think the byproduct is getting closer and building closer relationships with the players and with the coaches, which I look forward to. Sean, do you have a mahogany desk? <laughs> No, I don't. I don't uh, subscribe to that approach. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask you said about coming into camp the way it used to be. It's evolved a lot through the years. Yeah. For a guy who's been around and done this for a while, was that hard to adjust to? And I'm assuming maybe even as the years go on, teams are doing, I'll say less, but less strain on the players because you're ramping up for an entire long season. Is that tough to adjust to? And do you even adjust more this year, maybe than you even did last year? getting the players ready more than, let's say, working them harder in training. Yeah, I think just overall it's the evolution of, of sports science uh, and integrating that into what we do, analytics as well, um, which I'm, you know, I'm a believer in. Obviously, it's, it's not the answer, but it's part of the answer that we, that we come to as a staff. Um, you know, always trying to, to put them in a position to be the best version of themselves. I know we say that a lot, but that's, I think, part of what that is. Um, does it get frustrating at times? Yes, because you feel like you've done enough of it and you want to be able to get into um, some other parts that they're going to have to execute, you know, in, come game time, but uh, all things in due time. 
Now, Sean, Sean, speaking of adjustments, Jamar Hamlin adjusting back to everyday practice and preparing for full contact. He's been cleared for full contact. That's a question. Uh, has he been cleared for full contact? And do you expect any trepidation from him or his teammates when it comes down to uh, that first moment of full contact? Or yeah, uh, with Demar's situation, like I mentioned in the spring, uh, he has all, our full support uh, and always will. And then uh, we'll continue to take it one day at a time, and we'll go at his cadence. Uh, at this point, he's been he's been he's full go, and uh, we'll take it one day at a time. So I think that's the best approach. Hey, Sean, um, Yeah, extreme confidence in Gabe. Um, he's one of our hardest workers. Um, he loves football. He's passionate about it. And when you when you follow that up with the work ethic, um, good things happen. And, and so, um, you know, I know it's, there's been a lot written about last season and all that. Uh, you know, he's a good football player and, and will always be one. And uh, I'm excited to watch him this season. Sean, I know every year is a reset, but considering everything that went in even beyond football a year ago, is it? maybe extra refreshing with this reset, looking forward to 2023 and putting everything of 2022 behind? Um, yeah, yeah, yes, to an extent. I, I, don't, I don't think we, you know, we definitely look kind of in the, in the, you know, what's ahead of us as opposed to what's behind us. But those experiences you take with you from a learning standpoint um, and a wisdom standpoint, I think, you know, you never – we all went through that, right? So whether it was DeMar's situation or, or many other things that we went through, I think it makes you stronger as you go forward. And, uh, and that's a lesson for, for my kids. It's a lesson for, for everyone out there. It's, it's part of who we are, and um, it makes you stronger moving forward. Sean, you talked a lot about taking a step forward from rookie year to year two and kind of like what goes into that. Is there anything specifically for Ty year you're kind of looking for him to do in camp, like things specifically you're looking for him to do? <laughs> well, I think that those – those conversations take place directly between myself, Kyer, and his position coach. Um, it's just continued to grow really more than anything. Um, he, you know, he works extremely hard. This game's important to him. Being good is important to him. Um, and so he has the DNA that way. And, and now he goes out there and he competes and, and uh, you know, just like the rest of them do. So it's, it's going to be, a, again, a learning opportunity starting this morning, and he'll continue to grow. Sean, with regard to a middle linebacker, What's your timetable for making a decision as you enter training camp? Because it is vital from a communication and rep standpoint. Yeah. Um, how are you? How do you see that? Here? Yeah, I don't want to really put a kind of a, a hard stop on when that's going to be declared, uh, when that decision is going to be made. You're right, though. There's there is value to making that sooner than later. Um, we'll know when we know, and uh, and so we've got to let that play out a little bit here at camp and get into the pads and see who leads the defense um, the right way and because that's also a, a big piece of that position. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about the players we have at that position and, and I look forward to watching them develop here. Hey, Sean, yeah. Adam, with Adam, the Yeah, so um, you know, I've thought through that. I think it'll be a little bit of an experience, that first preseason game, quite honestly, Joe, with going through it firsthand. Um, I've done my research on it, though, um, and also thought through it pretty extensively to this point. So, um, you know, obviously, a lot of the situations that do come up are offensively related situations. So you want to be up there, bless you, with the offense uh, when they have the ball. Um, that said, there are messages that need to get to the defensive players and adjustments and whatnot. So um, it'll be um, calculated when we do it and, and how we do it. Is research for that, like talking to other coaches who have you know, taken the job from head coach to adding that on? Like how, what kind of research can you do in figuring out? Yeah, I mean, I think some, some of that is, is in addition to you know, the, the strengths of your, your own staff, in this case my staff, our staff here, and then um, you know, it's always trying to fill out uh, where you're most needed, I think, too, at the end of the day, and using your instinct. Sean, you know about Sean? Now that you've spent more time around on the floor, where do you see him making an impact on this team? Whether it's on the field, in the locker room, like what does he offer? 
Yeah, we're excited to have Leonard. Um, you know, it's he, he got here, really arrived late in spring, so it was only a couple of weeks where he was around us. So I think that's one of the areas I mean, we've got questions that we have to get answered at camp, right, like any team. And middle linebacker, corner, um, in this case with Leonard specific to your question, that um, that relationship has to grow so that we get to understand what he does best and he understands our system, the intricacies of our system. Um, you know, just because yeah, I think he arrived two weeks to go in spring or somewhere thereabouts. So that'll be a kind of getting, this will be a getting to know time for us as well as it is for him. Tom, you have to like preach patience, Javon, because he's such an optimistic and positive person. I mean, he's already talking about when he can come back. For you, how do you navigate that? Because obviously you want him to get back as soon as possible, but you don't want to get him back too soon. Yeah, um, he's been through this before. Um, so I have full trust and confidence in Vaughn, whether it's playing football or, in this case, you know, rehabbing and getting himself back to, to where and when he's ready. Um, so, you know, he's not one to um, slow down intentionally just to slow down. He wants to be out there. Um, but I also have to trust him to, and our trainers um, to know when that time is exactly and and so you know we're, we're kind of going in his cadence uh, as well as Nate's cadence on it and um, I wish I could heal as quickly as he's healed um, I got little cuts and they don't even heal as fast as he's been healing off an ACL so um, I'm fully confident that he'll be he'll be ready. Sean what's been your message to the team about managing your own goals and expectations going into a season where you want to try and get over the hump and, and make that long goal at the end of the season but that's so far away. How do you talk to the team about that? Yeah, I mean, you know, we have goals. I'm not going to get into what they are. Um, I think really the goals need, you know, come from the team. They're derived from the players, um, and they take ownership of those goals. Um, and our leadership, our guys do a great job of leading our team. So right now it's about taking it really one step at a time, uh, one day at a time. Um, as you guys know, this is a, tis the season for a lot of projections and talk, and I'll let you guys live in that world. We live in the world of one day at a time and, and one snap at a time. So that's really what we're here to do is put one foot in front of the other, work hard, answer the questions we have uh, with our roster, um, some of the position battles. I'm excited to watch those develop um, and just get down to playing good, solid, fundamentally physical, hard-nosed football. Josh, you talked about Josh being showing more focus or being refocused or a, a new determination about him. He spoke about having a sense of the window closing on some of the older guys and maybe on, on this team in some ways, and especially with the older guys. What do you appreciate about that? And, and, and is that might be something you, you see in him and, uh, as a step forward? You always ask these multi-layered questions John uh, so the first one was about well, Josh's focus Josh well Josh's focus I mean he, when I asked him about it he talked about the sense of a window closing as far as an urgency with the older veterans to get them a championship and because this group is not going to be around for however many years and he senses that what do you appreciate about that well he's you know he's a man of the people he's a man he's a teammate Right. I mean, that's um, he has great awareness for that. I mean, these guys, the guys that he plays with are important to him. Uh, we had a brief one of our interactions uh, yesterday was brief, um, but he said to me, are you excited to be back at camp? And and I said to him the same question and, and he loves camp. And that's I mean, that doesn't come out of every player's mouth when they're going away to college dorms. Uh, you know, that's just the nature of what it is right um, so I just think he he likes the, he really enjoys being around his teammates as you guys know he has them over from time to time to his house he likes that camaraderie that, that fellowship um, so I think that's just part of who he is and, and so um, if I were his teammate I would appreciate that one of those older guys that he's that you're alluding to that you know he understands the urgency that way um, so, but overall, it's it's a new season, and you have to take it one step at a time. I think again, just 
Um, I think that's the right approach. Sean, you say that one step at a time. Obviously, it is a long season. You have a lot of expectations here, but what do you really try to establish today, day one, for this team? Yeah, I think, you know, the biggest thing is uh, we always talk about two things at the, at the introduction meeting, which happened last night. And really, the first one is why we go away to camp. I, I don't know how many teams still do it. Maybe less than a third of the NFL teams still do it. And I think it's because of the advances in, in facilities and resources people have now at these new facilities that, that people are getting. Um, and we feel the same about our facility. But that being said, we also feel there's value in the getting away to camp for at least the time that we're going to be here for. And um, I think a big piece of that is really the, building the relationships where guys can hang out after practice um, and get to know one another a little bit better, whether it's you know just time talking football or you know playing cards whatever it is you see some of you guys may see the chairs that they have lined up uh, along the walkway up up top there and that's you find guys after a meal sitting there just hanging out getting off their feet but also just talking life and i think that that goes a long way in terms of building a football team or any team for that matter um, that chemistry is important that bond is important um, if you don't have that it's hard to get it once the season happens because it's it's go 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 during the season and the other piece is that you know we're tr we're here and we're trying to build an identity of our football team uh, especially when the pads come on um, and if you don't build that physical identity well, that's hard to do as well once the season gets going um, in terms of being able to play physical football and, and run the football and stop the run and uh, be a physical football team overall. Sean, what do you, what do you like see when you, when you watch Dalton Kincaid and what do you project his impact on your offense can be this season? Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I, I'm around my TV in the off season in that break and so I get a chance to watch all the, again, uh, stuff that's said about he's going to be used in this position and that position and he's going to be like this player and um, I just like to let the guy have one practice <laughs> out here. Can we just take that approach and let's just let him put his helmet on today and, and get out there and, in front of the fans and enjoy it and uh, bless you and, and put some work in uh, before we say he's going to be worth this many catches and you know all that type of this on fantasy and whatever it is, man. It's just let him let him get out there and get his first NFL training camp practice in. Um, yeah, we'll check back. Yeah, we'll check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sean, uh, you have a lot of guys in this locker room, obviously, but what's your message to, to the young people, the young players who want to be go, go, go away out of the game, right? They want to be 100%. They want to be to where they are at the end of the season, the training camp. How do you preach patience to them, the young guys who are just coming in the first or second time? Well, I think you got to be really internally focused. I think that's that's where it starts. You know, if you if you're out there and you're counting numbers at my position, you know, at your position, and you're saying, hey, well, they're probably only going to keep five at my position, um, and there's seven guys here, and you start, you know, kind of doing the calculation in your head. I don't think that's a healthy mindset. We talked last night about that, and um, I think there's really this time of year in camp, there's there's really two types of players: the players that are just trying to get through one day. And there's players who are trying to get themselves ready for the season. Um, and those, usually those guys are more the veteran players who have been through it. But some of the young guys, um, you know, they know the situation. Um, they've heard stories. And um, the best thing they can do is, again, like I said, stay internally focused, control what they can control, and come out every day and compete. Sean, when you talk about the middle linebacker position, the communication side of it, is that a responsibility, wearing the green dots, calling the plays that you definitely want to have with your middle linebackers? Or would you be comfortable giving that to another position like some teams have done around the league? Yeah, ideally, you know, I'd like it to be the middle linebacker. But you know, I'm open if it isn't, and it isn't. That's OK, too. Um, so I'm open to whatever whatever comes to be the best for the team. Coach, where do you see James Cook uh, in the backfield and his role for this year? Where are you looking forward to him? Yeah, again, I, you know, roles to me are defined a little bit more once we get to cut down time. Right now, it's, hey, go out there and compete um, and continue to grow as a football player. I mean, he's just in his second year now. So, um, you know, we'll see how that competition plays out. Outside of the campus here at St. John Fisher, what's your favorite part of the Rochester area? Oh, boy. Uh, I've got a, probably have, a couple things. Do you things. have a favorite part? Oh, yeah. I mean, first of all, the area is, is – this Pittsford area is absolutely beautiful, um, and the surrounding communities, uh, the fan support, 
Um, I like Pittsford Dairy uh, as well, which I've seen a couple of you there, uh, maybe some of you more than once. So you just need a little bit of a little bit of checks and balances on that for you guys, right? I've never uh, been there. Sure. <laughs> Get off my case. <laughs> uh, what do you like? I go with a vanilla, uh, van a chocolate milkshake, um, but a chocolate malt. I think not everybody has malts these days, and and uh, I'm I'm kind of a old-fashioned ice cream guy. I think I got that from my mom. She was like malts when I was growing up. So, we'll, we'll see you there. Yeah. yeah, I'll be there a few times. But don't, you can't report that though. So. <laughs> Thanks guys. Thanks, John. Thanks, John.